Hi, this is Lynn, and welcome to another Persuasion Bite, bite-sized tips on persuasion that you can use right away. As a leader, oftentimes you're called in to mediate between two different people or teams or departments. And a lot of times you face people who are very intractable in their roles. Let's take a look at how you can move them along. And we're going to rely on something called the drama triangle, which was created by Alan Cartman, a psychologist. And here's how that works. As a triangle, there are three points of view. And if we could summarize each of them, it would be victim, I am blameless, persecutor, I am right, and rescuer, I am good. What usually happens is that the person who feels victimized is the person who starts the triangle, who believes that something beyond her control has happened. And because it's beyond her control and it's being done to her by somebody else, she has no recourse but to complain. And she's complaining about the persecutor, who of course believes that he is right. That, he, that what he's asking for is exactly what needs to happen and the victim is just refusing to do it. You're often as the leader brought in to the rescuer role where you're just trying to help people get something done and play better together. But just as the victim abdicates all responsibility and just as the persecutor says, I'm just trying to do the right thing, we often get juice out of being rescuers, that people turn to us when they cannot do things on their own. And that makes us, I have to admit, feel a little bit superior to, superior to everybody else because we have a skill to help them talk to each other that they don't have on their own. When you face these kinds of situations, and by the way, drama triangle, the toughest system to break. In order to break it and actually move people forward, you need to get out of the rescuer role and actually have people talk to each other. Here is the strategy that you can use. So let's say that George is the victim and Mary is the persecutor. So you sit George and Mary down in a room with you and you turn to George and you say, well, you turn to both of them and say, I understand there's a problem in this area. George, tell me what your view of the problem is. So you hear what George has to say and then you ask Mary what her, what she sees. And you say, okay, we'll address that in a moment. But I wanna ask both of you a question first. And we'll start with George. If you were to put yourself in Mary's position, what do you think Mary would say is most frustrating about working with you? So now George projects himself into Mary's situation. Well, she would say this and she would say that and she would be unhappy about these things. And then you say, okay, so now George, what do you think that would make Mary want to do? And so then George would be able to talk about Mary's behavior as if it is his own. What he would expect to be doing in that situation or what he's seen her do. And you say, okay, that's great. Now Mary, let me ask you the same question. If you were George, what would he say frustrates him most about working with you? And Mary would do the same thing and then ask the follow-up question. So if that's how George feels, what do you think that would make him want to do? And what ends up happening is that both of themselves, in order to do this exercise, now have empathy for the other person's role. And it's very hard to have antipathy for somebody once you've put yourself in their position. So it's at this point, their resistance to working together is as low as it's ever going to be. And you can talk a little bit about now that we know these things and now we understand the behavior, let's talk a little bit about the situation and how we can work together to figure out this situation, what we need to do next here. And then let's schedule a time after this is over to talk about how we can improve things on an ongoing basis because the two of you have great ideas and you're both very skilled in your areas and I know that you can work this stuff out. 
So what you've done here as a rescuer, instead of taking sides, which is, of course, what both of them want you to do, and to be on their side, you've shown that you are impartial. And you've had them have empathy for each other, which means that they're going to stop the sniping and arguing that you've seen because they put each other in the other person's position. And you'll be able to come up with the simple strategies that will help you get through this conflict in the moment and then set up some time where you can dig more deeply into it and figure out ways for this not to surface again. And when you do this, when you stop rescuing and enable people to have empathy for each other and to work things out, you become the most persuasive person in the room. Thanks for watching.